Hello everyone, in today's flyout video we're going to be taking a look at how you can use real world engines and recreate them inside of the game. Now we've done a lot of things in here and it's worth always noting uh, whenever you're going to be experimenting with any sort of real world stuff you have to temper it with there's the ideal, there's the reality, there's different fuels and there's so many things that complicate what is real world versus uh, kind of what the game creates. But so we'll walk you basically through a couple of the different ways to do it. Now there's one thing that you need to know no matter what engine you're constructing in this game and that's going to be the way that you're going to keep it cool. Now what I've done is I've set up everybody's favorite test bench here. I've got my little guy about to get blasted in the face by a bunch of exhaust. Sorry my guy. But uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is if you're dealing with air-cooled engines, uh, when you're testing these things, there's a pretty good probability that uh, you're going to overheat them pretty bad. Uh, one of the things you can do, of course, is if you're using water-cooled engines, is you can actually connect them up to a radiator. And uh, one of the things you can do, as you can see both of these are connected to radiators, is we can actually increase the scale of these suckers. So if I go up to uh, five scale radiators here, these are pretty honking radiators. They'll have a much easier time of basically cooling off uh, any creation uh, we put up here. Uh, another thing you want to keep in mind, too, is you're going to need a power source, basically for the purposes of of uh, getting this thing started. And then what I always like to do is I do an exhaust source too. Just make sure it is connected to the engine. You'll notice here by default, it does not. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and slam that into the connections here. So we're gonna be making a bunch of different engines here. And I think this is kind of fun. You can do a dual exhaust, you can do four exhaust. <laughs> Either way, it's gonna be a ton of smoke coming in this guy's face in a minute, but that's part of the fun. So we're gonna recreate several engines throughout history and kind of show you sort of how I approach it as well as do it. So the first engine we're gonna take a look at is the BMW 801. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar familiar with this engine. Uh, this was the one that powered the uh, Falkwa 90 in the early part of the war. It is an old school radial. It's uh, a really, really solid one. We can see here it produces between 1560 and 2000 PS, uh, aka basically 2000 horsepower if you want to think about it. But there's a bunch of things we need to extract from this for the purposes of being able to design it. The first are going to be kind of the basic, basic, basic bits, and a lot of that we can get down here. Uh, one thing we notice, we're a 14-cylinder supercharged two-row air-cooled engine, so we know that we're using superchargers, we know we're two-row, and we're 14 cylinders, uh, 14 divided by two is going to be seven, and we know our bore and stroke is going to be 156 by 156. Sometimes you get lucky, and they'll also give you your compression ratio, which happens to be down here at 6.5 to one, and they'll also let you know general things like power to weight and stuff like that, which is more than enough to get us started here. So now that I have those details, let's do it. So I'm gonna click this. Uh, this is an originally an air-cooled engine. So I'm gonna come up here and hit air-cooled. I'm gonna set this to radial. I know I'm dealing with two rows according to my documents. I know that I have seven cylinders per row. Now, according to the details here, we're at 156 millimeters, which is gigantic. And our stroke is gonna be 156 millimeters as well. Now, according to the document here, uh, we're looking at a compression ratio of a staggeringly low 6.5 to one, which actually isn't uncommon for supercharged engines. Uh, we have our valves, we have a supercharger, we have our max pressure, all that stuff. We're not gonna play with any of that yet. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna come down to this performance curve and uh, just take a quick little gander at this and try to get a feel for it. A couple little things we notice, uh, they said according to our document that our takeoff power is 2700 RPM. Now, if I take my mouse and I come over here to 2700 RPM, I'll hold it right here. So you can see that we're producing, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, we're producing uh, 857 kilowatts at 1961. So uh, we definitely are in need of something that's gonna give us a boost a little bit later on but keep in mind we haven't supercharged this yet so that's going to be kind of our limit uh, the next thing i like to do here is you see where it says rpm limiter uh just a quick little pro tip here i would actually recommend putting this up really really high now that doesn't seem to have that much of an effect on this side of things but that's not a problem but inside of the game itself you'll be bouncing off the limiter and it'll be mechanically limiting your power which uh, really has a big big negative effect if you're trying to capitalize on everything that you can get out of here so that's looking pretty good um again this is our initial start here uh, we need uh 1400 kilowatts and we're we're currently at an 857, so we need a pretty hefty boost here. So what I like to do here is I always like to bust out a calculator and do some quick math. I know 1147 divided by, and we saw that it was 857. 857 uh, means we're producing about 1.4 times, uh, we need about 1.35 times more power here. Now, some people, of course, also notice the fact this particular engine was supercharged. So what they'll do is they'll run over here, they'll put on a single speed supercharger, and they'll increase the pressure ratio roughly to the lack of power that we have. So let's go do that. So I'm going to bust this up to about 1.4, which, as you recall, is about the amount of power that we were short. So I'm going to come down on my performance curve, and you can see here that if I hold my mouse over this, double check to make sure altitude, by the way, is simpler, you'll notice that uh, we're still producing a staggering 867. Another reason for that, of course, is if you come down here, you'll notice that my max manifold pressure here is actually limited. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put that up to the equal uh, 1.41 here, just to be fair. Let's go ahead and take a look at the performance curve. Ah, that's a little different. 
And now if I hold my mouse right here to 27 horse, 100 horsepower, I can see a very clearly, a 2700 RPM rather, you can see I'm producing 1026 kilowatts at a 2352. So the big problem we have now is um, we're doing okay. Our power peak is back here and you can see I still have a little bit of room and I really wanna push my power this way. Now there's a couple of different ways to push this. Uh, one thing is we can do is we can try to increase the torque, uh, which is just a matter of jamming more air into the cylinders basically. Again, mechanical losses is the reason this drops so fast. Uh, the second thing we can do is we can fit with the valve. Now, if I come over to my valves real quickly and I drop to a two-valved engine, oh, this is a tiny, tiny thing, uh, what you'll notice is it actually takes my RPM, my um, torque, and it causes it to cut off sooner. So you can actually see here that I'm only producing a 919 kilowatts at a 2091 RPM, which isn't desirable. And of course, I can also play with the diameter, and it's going to have the same general effect. So if I drop this to a 20 millimeter valve, for example, open my performance curve, you can see it has the same exact effect of pulling the power backwards, uh, which is a very typical. So neither one of those is gonna work for us. Instead, what we have to do is we're gonna to have to gradually increase the pressure ratio and then basically play with our max pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the max pressure ratio, I'm gonna crank it up to a stupid 2.0. Now you're saying, why is that stupid? That's an enormous amount of pressure. So if atmospheric pressure were one bar, we're now jamming two, uh, which is pretty sagray. But remember our manifold here is going to limit how much pressure can get in here. Now I happen to know from a flying around a bunch of flight simulator games that if I come in here and put 1.6 in here, that that's usually the limit that they always put, you know, 1.6 ATA. Oh, by the way, one thing you want to keep an eye out for when you're working with this is double check to make sure the fuel that you're carrying is the correct fuel. Uh, to check that, of course, you can just click on it. You can see this is actually holding a Jet A right now. Now, uh, you want to be careful of that, huh? you can. We want to make sure you're using AV gas for this. That will have a performance. All right, let's see what happens. So now one of the things you'll notice is because we're allowing twice as much pressure, well, not quite twice, about 70% more pressure in here, and we're still capping it, you will notice that my RPM and my power peak is actually shifted to the right here. Now, if you remember, we're trying to get ourselves up to about this point, uh, right where my mouse is here, and we're supposed to be getting a limit of about, uh, like I mentioned, that a pretty, pretty high RPM there. So right now we're at 1450 kilowatts. Uh, remember, we're not looking for 1450, we're looking for 1147, which of course uh, means that uh, we boosted this up way too high. So let's go ahead and uh, bring this down a little bit. Notice we have an overall boost here. We'll come down to 1.5. We'll check my performance curve again. Again, you'll notice that's going to reduce my power, but it's also going to reduce my red line. Uh, we don't want either of those. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to increase my manifold maximum significantly here. And uh, doing that, of course, is going to now mean I'm now producing 1505 kilowatts, which is a lot at uh, 2972. So now that we've done that, we can now use our valve size to actually reduce our red line here. And you can see by bringing my valve size down to about 20 millimeters, I'm basically perfect. And if you come down here, you'll notice that we were looking here for a total of 1147 kilowatt. I am now... Um, basically perfect. If I actually were to come over here and up this just a tiny bit, you will see here that I'm just about 2700 RPM and I'm just a little high on the kilowatts. But I keep in mind too, in the real world, when you're doing stuff like this, um, there's obviously going to be losses. So that's looking pretty good. So um, this is actually pretty happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this engine. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I have an engine that I like is I like to go ahead and run it in the field, so to speak, and kind of experiment with it a little bit, see if I like it. So again, this is all looking really groovy. Um, one thing you can do, by the way, if uh, you're a little nervous about the production here, oh, of course you could Crank the uh, single, you could switch to a dual speed. You could also crank this up substantially so that you get more pressure at high altitude. But again, that's not something I need to play with too much because remember, we're producing twice as much pressure as uh, we're actually using. Again, our limit is 1.8, we're producing 2.0. So that's plenty of overhead here. If you're really, really, really nervous about it, you could come on here and increase that even higher, but that's a massive pressure ratio. And now when we come back here, you'll actually see that it'll bring our red line back to the left here, even though, but what it's really done is it's just increased our power. So uh, that's just one of those things you have to kind of keep an eye out for uh, when you start fitting with it. Because remember, superchargers do use some of their power. All right, 2.0, that looks good to me. 1.8 looks good to me. Flywheel, all that stuff is fine to me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save my engine. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go ahead and call it what it is. It's a BMW 801C engine. And now one of the cool things is, and I really, really, really appreciate that, is that the fact that we can come in here and we can save different parts here. So I can actually save this engine as an assembly. So if I like this, I can do BMW and I'll put the 801C in there if I wanted. But what I want to do is I want to test this thing. I mean, I've had a lot of fun with it so far. So let's uh, kind of run it through its motions real quickly here. Uh, let's see here. We need a prop, but we can't do a prop, Bob, because we need a system first. Uh, let's see here. Power, gearbox. And uh, every time somebody puts the gearbox on, everybody always panics. Um, I say, don't worry about it too much, or we're going to adjust it in a second. So click on the gearbox. Um, 
going to go ahead and set its position 0, 0, 0. It's going to put it right in the middle. And what I try to do is mount it right here. And um, one of the cool things, you can actually change the scale of this thing. And um, when you make it nice and small like that, it looks a little more like it's supposed to be there, <laughs> is what I usually joke. I'll make sure you will go ahead and set your drive ratio accurately. And again, uh, we don't have the drive ratio here. So we can fit around with this a little bit later on. But again, that's not the point. So the input is correct. Uh, this is correct. Uh, my radiators are correct. This is all set correct. I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a prop on here. Uh, we like to stick a club prop on generally. So what I'm going to do is grab myself a propeller. Uh, that's a very tiny. Notice how it fits perfectly on my little gearbox there. Isn't that cool? I love that. And you can see we can move it up just a little bit. So it basically sits there just like that. Oh, oh I guess not. Let's take it a little bit nicer. Beautiful. So there it is. Wrong size propeller, of course. Um, we're going to have to make this thing a little bit bigger. But uh, what I like to do when I'm doing engine tests is I like to do something really, really absurd like this. And uh, the reason I like to do that is because it gives me the ability to basically run the engine and see what it looks like at power. And uh, one of the things you can do down here is you can actually set uh, different speeds. So if I wanted a target RPM of, I'll uh, say, 2700, which if you remember is my, whoa, <laughs> that would be going pretty quick. It'll definitely limit itself pretty quickly and pretty effectively. So let's go ahead and save this and give this a try. Now, keep in mind, this propeller is not optimized for this. So we did that intentionally, but there's a bunch of little things we want to kind of take a look at here. First thing I always like to do is I like to shut the power off and uh, see if the engine dies. Uh, keep in mind, without sizing the propeller correctly, um, it's not going to work well. You know, we're not going to have a pretty good idea of idle, but I can give it a little tiny tap, and you can see that gives me about 1,000 revolutions per minute. Um, it's always fun, of course. Uh, we're not cooling anything because we're an air-cooled engine here. And uh, we can see here we're producing our about 2 kilowatts right now, which is not a heck of a lot of power, but uh, that's perfectly fine. So what I like to do is I always like to start by bringing up to about half power. And uh, when you do that, uh, you can see immediately that our propeller is hopeless. Uh, it has absolutely, it's, it's desperately trying to produce the RPM to get us down about 2,700. And you can see about half power is about 322 kilowatts, which isn't bad. So let's go ahead and pop it all the way up. Again, our propeller is desperately trying to contain the energy in this thing. And now you can see it's doing a really bad job of it. But it is catching up. And you'll actually notice here that our power is almost exactly our desired power. And again, you've got quite a bit of losses here. We're going to be overheating in a few seconds here. But it's a good time to go ahead and run through and check to make sure everything's working the way we want. And we can see very clearly that it is. So that's it for basically a nice, simple engine. But what happens when things get a little more complex? Next engine we're going to take a look at is the Allison V1710. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this one, this is a very, very famous World War II aircraft. As you can see, it's got quite a bit of stuff that it powers. It's a kind of a neat little kind of version of another one over in England as well. So it's a pretty cool engine. It's, uh, it's a different engine. It's got a bunch of funky things in it. It has a two-stage servocharger, servocharger. I've invented a new thing. It has a new supercharger on it. It's two-stage. I'll have to work with that a little later on. Uh, again, not too big here. Um, again, it's got pretty low power at the beginning. It's a liquid one. Um, it can see towards the end, uh, theoretically, you could get up to 2,800 horsepower with it. It also uses turbo superchargers, which makes things a little more challenging for us to uh, kind of do. But uh, like I said, not too bad. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, uh, we get our critical stats that we're going to implement. All right, let's do it to it. So first things first, uh, we're a 60 degree V12. Uh, we got that all arranged up to be top here. Uh, we can actually come up here if we wanted to. We can do a V1710. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to here. This is a, now a liquid cooled engine, uh, which is cool for us. We just got to make sure that these guys down here are plugged in, which they are. That'll help keep everything a little bit cooler today. So we know that our bore is going to be 140 millimeters, a little bit smaller than the German engine. And we also know that our stroke here is going to be a 152 millimeters. So we're just going to bring that down a little bit. Now, of course, our, uh, let's see if we can find out uh, what we're looking for. Compression ratio is 665, which is, again, pretty typical for the era. We'll go ahead and call it 6.7, which is pretty safe. We'll raise this up a little bit. And now, of course, we can start fitting with all this good stuff here. So uh, now we're ready to go. Um, we know that we're turbo and supercharged. And we also know that we're produced about 1,100 kilowatts. Now, without doing any fancy math or any funny uh, fits around here, by the way, our limit of RPM is now 3,000. So actually, I got to come over here. Like I set this to 3,000. Whoa, 32,000. That sounds legit. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, run it basically on its own before we start plugging things into it, because this is always going to give us a good starting point. So there's our max manifold pressure looking pretty good to me. That's looking pretty good to me. It looks pretty groovy. All right, let's punch the button and see what happens. So we're looking for about, uh, like I said, about 1,100 kilowatts at 3,000 RPM. And if I go like this, I will notice here that, um, let's see, we're producing... Not quite enough here. We're about 667 kilowatts, which is, it's a lot. And that's a lot of torque too, not going to lie. But we're a little low on the RPM and we're a little low on this. So what I like to do is attack it with the turbocharger first. 
And the reason I like the turbocharger first is because as the RPM comes up, turbocharged power comes up with it. So it gives you a nice linear torque increase. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and do some quick little estimates here. Uh, according to our little document here, 28 PSI is going to be its piece. So what I'm gonna do is do 56.5 divided by 29.92. And we can see from doing some quick research here, it's a 1.9 pressure ratio. So I'm gonna come in here and I'll go ahead and say a max pressure ratio of 1.9. That's that's a lot. It's probably gonna be a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a turbocharger on here. And now we're gonna experiment a little bit with the pressure ratio. I'm going to start by popping it up to, oh, I'll do about 2.5 2. is going to be my ratio here. Relatively low. We're going to leave the supercharger alone from now because this is going to give us all sorts of issues as you're going to discover in a minute. So I'm going to press the performance curve and um, as just like I promised, you'll notice the turbocharger does a better job at higher RPMs. So uh, we have ourselves a new power peak of 15, 1464 kilowatts at a 29.15. So um, we're close. Uh, our power is just a little high. So what we need to do now is we need to kind of give it that little bit of a push that's going to get us uh, kind of the next level again we're looking for right around here where my mouse is currently to be our peak remember this is also at zero uh, if we, as we get higher obviously you're going to produce less power so that's cool so let's raise this up to 2.0 and um that's pretty substantial and i'll go ahead and take a look at the performance curve one more time and you can see here that coming up to two it's just a little bit too much pressure in here so it's uh, struggling a little tiny bit and you can also see where mechanically things start to not be, like you very much so 1550 kilowatt that's a lot uh, that's a heck of a heck of a heck of a lot and even if i raised up the uh, pressure ratio a little bit higher here and trust me in the real world they're not this high uh, that's insane uh, you can see it really doesn't do much for me uh, getting that last couple rpm out of it we're not really getting any benefits here and that's kind of sort of the downside i mean you can go like that and pop that in there but again you're not doing anything all you've done is uh, raised our red lines power just a tiny bit and you've increased our overall torque a little bit as well of course the cost of all this is uh, look at how insanely high this is right now so right now we're producing too much power and a lot of that power comes from the fact that we're basically have this extremely powerful engine right now that's, you know, it's got all sorts of modern conveniences, modern fuels, so it's kind of pushing us a little bit. But one of the things we read is it's also a supercharged engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two stage here and you'll notice it gives you a couple of different ratios. Uh, most people, what you do is it's kind of a thing like this. So you have your initial ratio there and then you'd have your secondary ratio. It's usually about 33% or 40% higher uh, if you want to do it. Uh, the altitude change, of course, that would be uh, usually it's around 15 thousand feet uh, we're just going to call it 4500 meters i just kind of keep an eye on that and i love the fact you can actually push a button to do it automatically as well it's just kind of one of those neat things so this is all complicated because now we've got a lot of pressures and we have a max manifold of two what's that going to do to our performance curve well let's take a look as you can see it had almost no difference to our performance curve but watch what happens let's go up to 20 uh, 2000 meters here it's about 6000 feet so if i go there you'll notice my power comes back a little bit. Uh, of course, if I go up to, I'll go up to 5,000 uh, meters here, go ahead and plot that as well. You'll see I have a pretty substantial reduction in uh, power here, but I'm still more or less making my takeoff power, which is awesome. That uh, just gives you an idea of how powerful a supercharger and turbocharger is. Now, if I were to come up to 10,000 meters, which is really, really high, you'll notice my power slowly starts to shift away. And now we're down to 679 kilowatts, which is still plenty. The problem is our engine is still way, way, way too powerful. And I'm going to press zero and go up like that. You'll notice again that we're still a little high. So just like we did before, we can now choke it a little bit by adjusting the valve diameter. Now, if I come down to, uh, we'll call it about 21 here, we'll go about 20.7. This is my performance curve. You'll notice that, of course, um, our powers come down a little bit. So we'll go ahead and grab that again. We'll pull it down to about 15. Let's see what that does. And you can see it's starting to slowly, gradually choke the power. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, oh, you don't produce enough power, but that's not actually the reality. Remember, that's peak power and it's quite possible that the peak power does not hit when our actual power does for takeoff power here so as we again choke it a little more our peak power is going to slowly shift to the left here even though we could still be producing our recommended power of whatever it needs now, from a manufacturing perspective you would never design it that way you design it so your peak power is over here but you limit it here for reliability purposes but that's kind of the nature of the beast so you can see we're still producing enormous enormous power so i'm going to go ahead and pop this back up and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to reduce this compression ratio a little bit down to 4.0 to 1. So if I open this sucker up now, uh, you'll notice that that killed our power almost perfectly. So if I bring this up to, we'll do a 5 to 1 compression ratio, plot that again, uh, you can see that a power is almost perfect, actually. Uh, it's all 1,200, um, we're a little high there, and you can see it's about what it needs to be. I'll increase the compression ratio just a tiny bit more. 
And that's not bad. Uh, we're definitely a little overpowered here, but uh, that's not, not going to give us too many issues here. Again, we're boosting the bejesus out of this thing. If we came down here and reduced this a little bit and plotted that, we could start getting it to shift that way again, uh, trying again to finagle it. You can see we're pretty darn close, though. And again, that's uh, more than close enough for government work. So uh, now that we've got that all plugged in, we're just going to confirm that our gearbox is indeed plugged into it, which it is. And we're going to confirm that our handy-dandy little propeller is, which I've thickened up the plops a little bit. And uh, let's go give it a shot. Oh man, I'm afraid of this thing already. So our idle's pretty good. Uh, we're not having any issues as far as that goes. Uh, one thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and give us a little bit of power. Keep in mind the propeller blade is uh, not designed for this. Uh, that's okay though, because uh, we're just testing. Uh, the fun thing too is uh, we can see our radiator is actually idle right now because it hasn't gotten hot enough. Oh, don't worry, my friend, it will. There's our 3,300 limit. Uh, again, 3,000. As the propeller blade bites more air, it'll uh, slowly go ahead and set that. Our little radiator friend is uh, going to start waking up in a half a second here. Uh, it's still idle. Oh, 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 there it goes. There it goes. All right, let's go kick it up to 100%. And we can see without a doubt here that uh, my radiators are well sized, is uh, keeping us cool. RPM on this thing is pretty good. Uh, the power is almost exactly what we promised you that it would be here um, a little bit earlier. We're a little bit up, but again, depending on the type of fuel, we're using really, really nice fuel here. It's going to be slightly higher. Our torque is fine, our boost is fine, our supercharger is fine. Everything is looking lovely. What happens when we want to make an engine that's a little bit simpler, though? Our next victim today is going to be the Rotex 912. Uh, this is a pretty neat aircraft. Uh, it's a nice little engine. It's this tiny little thing. It's kind of fun. I know all the like, red lines and everything right off the top of my head. It's uh, Look at how many different aircraft it powers, by the way. But it is this little tiny, tiny, tiny thing. And uh, that's going to make it fun. And also notice it runs on basically everything as sort of power. It also gives us some warnings and notice the higher compression ratio. So uh, let's put this thing together. So we know that this is a liquid slashed air cooled engine. And of course, I uh, will have to play with this quite a bit to get this to work. So first things first, uh, we're going to do the same thing we did before. It's a 79.5 uh, bore size here. Uh, that's a tiny one. 79.5 is going to round up to 80 as far as I'm concerned. Uh, stroke is going to be 61 millimeters. Oh my gosh, that's so tiny. And, oh my God, I don't think I can get 61. There's my 61. A compression ratio is nine to one. That's where we're going to get a lot of power from. Uh, valves, I'm going to leave all this stuff alone. None of this. Uh, max pressure is going to be 1.0. Idle and everything looks groovy. Uh, the problem is here that our idle limiter is uh, not set correctly. Um, remember, it's a 5,800 horsepower. Actually, 5,800 would be very interesting from a Rotax 912. But uh, more realistically, we're going to set a pretty high red line of about 6,500 RPM here, which is going to be pretty substantial. Um, that's going to give us some issues with this propeller as well because now our propeller is going to be oversized um, but we'll deal with that in a minute so if i go ahead and take a look at the performance curve here i can see at low altitude um, we're producing 113 kilowatts now 113 is actually very high for this engine and another thing you'll observe is it's producing at 79.22 rpm which is too high now if i take my little mouse here and i kind of come down here like this uh, this would be about 3500 rpm this would be right around 55 if i look about here you'll see that i'm producing probably about 102 103 kilowatts which is just a little high for this particular engine uh, of course just like always we can always come over here and we can reduce our valve area we can even go down to two valves like that if i plot that um it's only gonna have a little tiny reduction in power here again not that big of a deal if i want to reduce my valve size just a little bit again i'm just choking the air supply right out of it go ahead and plot that sucker you can see that it has such a little impact on this thing because this little little tiny engine is just so potent as far as that goes so let's go ahead and uh, really really choke it there we go it's a little better so you can see here, it drops into 110 kilowatts at 79.22 RPM. But again, um, we're going to be right around 100, probably 95, 96 kilowatts, which is going to be right in here, which isn't too bad. Uh, if we want it to be terrible, of course, we could drop this down like one. Uh, that's going to really, really bring it down. And if you take a look here, we're about 90 kilowatts at 6,700 um, RPM here. Remember, about 5,800, we're supposed to be right around 60 kilowatts. So we're actually perfect here. This is actually exactly what we wanted to do. And uh, you can see from my limitations here, uh, that's done pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this and um, I've got to do a couple quick little changes. Um, of course, what I could do is change the propeller, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to go to the gearbox, and I'm just going to make it so the final drive is two to one. So this guy's going to go around twice for every time this goes around once to basically absorb all that extra energy. And of course, uh, when you do the math on that real quick, you realize this is no longer 3,000 RPM. Uh, it's going to be 5,800 divided by two, uh, 58 divided by two. Let's see, it's going to be a 2,900 RPM. It's going to be our spin speed. So let's go ahead and I'll take a quick little list here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, there's a reduction gear in here. It actually has a set reduction gear of 2.43 to 1. We could actually program that one in here if we wanted to. And uh, just looking through all the different last details, making sure I haven't made any mistakes. All right, let's give it a try. 
Oh my gosh, that thing is so cute. <laughs> oh wow, that's a, that's a tiny engine there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it through its paces here. I'll go ahead and I'll pop it up to a 50%. I doubt that it's gonna be able to turn this propeller, but we'll try it. Uh, we can see we're producing about 16 kilowatts here, which isn't too bad if I go ahead and jam on full power. Keep in mind, we don't need a radiator this large. Uh, this is so overkill for something this big. But we'll let it kind of uh, spin up. And a couple things we're noticing right away. Uh, one thing, of course, is that we're kind of topping out here. You know, when I click on this, I can see that my RPM is about half. Remember, we're supposed to be getting about uh, to 5,800 RPM for peak power. So uh, we've got a little bit of tweaking to do with this propeller. It's just too heavy and it's just too big to be able to support something this small. So let's go ahead and uh, make a quick little tweak here. I'm gonna go back to the gearbox here and make this a five to one. Uh, that should be more than enough to do the deed. All right, 15 gets you 20 that uh, we're gonna over rev this little guy. There's 5,800 and you can see we're actually bouncing off the limiter right now. So uh, one of the tricks I've learned to do that is that if this becomes an issue, if you actually hold down the three key on your keyboard, you can change the target RPM and you can actually basically un, you know, choke it down to a more reasonable level. And a couple things we wanna see here, of course, is uh, is our radiator doing the job? And we can see every time the radiator opens up for half a second there, that it does indeed do the job. Uh, you can see it basically slams into 400, the radiator opens and you can see it drops 14 degrees. So this radiator is far too large. So as I'm talking, of course, uh, you can see my target RPM is uh, dropping quite significantly here. And what we're basically gonna do is that we're gonna play with this target at RPM and uh, start to reduce it and see what happens when we get to our desired red line here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, knock this down to about 1100. Uh, this should start, you can, yeah, you can see right away how it's starting to basically work the engine a little harder as the propeller blades uh, start to bite there. So about 5200, we're doing about 60 kilowatts, which is actually about right. Um, that, that's more or less right. No, we've actually done a really, really nice job in this engine here. It's about 1100. You can see the engine power is coming up a little bit. We'll kind of give it just a little bit more leeway here. Remember about 5800 was uh, what they said on the page there. And that looks about right. There's about 5,800 RPM, and you can see we're producing about 55 to 60 kilowatts. So uh, we've done a pretty solid job here. And uh, like I said, we've got to be careful that our red line that we set isn't so low that um, it basically bounces off the red line and never opens its throttle up all the way, which is always kind of a complicated problem. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of really, really simple ways to kind of uh, create uh, your engine of your dreams, uh, so to speak, uh, in these games. Keep in mind, like I've been saying many, 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 many times over, that uh, no matter what you do do, uh, you're always going to find situations where it doesn't quite match the real world numbers. But keep in mind, there are different ways to measure an engine in the real world, which is going to have a profound impact on what you're going to do. One thing I do want to recommend, no matter what, though, is once you find a combo that works, always save it. And that's going to be a quick way. On our next video, of course, uh, we're going to take a look at recreating real-world jet engines. Enjoy.